Hey, it's Luke. All right, many of you don't know this, but my formal college education was in radio broadcasting. I actually got my dream radio job right out of college, actually when I was still in college, but anyways, it's a whole other video. <laughs> so I worked in radio and then I left. And I've been thinking about this a lot in the last little while. I've been wondering, hmm, is this the end of the usefulness of my radio broadcasting diploma? Is it really over? But I realized a few things. In college, we had something called music appreciation class. It was a, a course for one semester or maybe two. I, <laughs> I don't remember. But what we had to do as part of the class was to listen to each radio station in our city for a week at a time. No matter what it was, if it was the kind of music we liked, it didn't matter. Every week we had to listen to a different radio station. And the most interesting one for me was a music style that I really didn't like, <laughs> which was country music. But it turned out that was the most interesting week of all of them. You know, I'd never been a fan, but during that week, there were a few songs that I heard that I really liked. And actually one of them is still one of my favorite songs after all these years. <laughs> but I think everybody should do this, whether you're in radio school or not. You learn so much in each one of those weeks. It can take a while, especially in larger cities. If you've got 15 to 20 radio stations, it'll take a few months to get through them, but it's really, really worth the time. And it doesn't really take that much time out of your day because it's time that you'd be listening to music anyways. You're just replacing it with a different, different type of music or a different radio station. But no matter what it is, talk radio, country music, pop, top 40, rock, classic rock, oldies, whatever it is, and whether you like it or not, something happens. You start to notice things. You notice how lyrics are written. You notice similarities or differences from the music you usually listen to compared to this one. You notice things that the announcers say, the build up or breakdown in songs. You notice the length of songs, how they end, which songs mix well with other songs. I don't know what you'll learn, but I know you'll learn something. So the second thing is production. I know it's obvious you're in radio school, you're dealing with production stuff, but it's a specific things that you learn that are really useful. You learn how to use a mixing board, but while you're doing that, you're learning to keep an eye on your levels, which is really, really useful when you're mixing music. You notice the flow of how levels work compared to the sound that's coming out. You learn how you do the voicing for different types of ads. So you learn a little bit about the, the dynamics of your voice, the different things that your voice can do. If you're doing vocals for your music, that could be really useful. You learn how to edit phone calls with perfect accuracy and timing. You learn microphone technique. What happens if you're too close to the microphone and you're popping your peas or if you're too far away and you're getting too much room noise. There are all kinds of skills that you can bring into your music. Plus you get to use professional equipment that you usually wouldn't have access to at home. I mentioned the timing and that's really a big one. Radio is interesting because the news goes on at the top of the hour, exactly at the top of the hour, every hour or whenever there's a newscast. It can't be a minute late. It can't be approximate. When the clock hits zero, you have to be ready. So you learn to be on time and deal with deadlines. If you're on your way into the booth to do your newscast, and you learn that Taylor Swift is coming to your city, you can't just say, oh, you know what? Give me a couple minutes. I'll just write something up and you know, we'll, we'll go on it at two minutes after, three minutes after the hour. It doesn't work like that. You have to be there on time. So you learn to work with the deadlines and you learn to deal with priorities and organize stuff. That's all stuff that can be useful for anything really with music production and especially sync licensing. Uh, you learn that timing is super, super important. For example, ads in radio have to be 30 seconds. Actually, it's usually 29 and a half seconds, but uh, basically they're 30 second ads. They have to be 30 seconds. You can't go over, it can't be 31 seconds because uh, you had an extra three words in there. You basically have to edit to time so everything is exact. It's the same thing with sync licensing. I do 30 second versions of a lot of my cues. Uh, they have to be exactly 30 seconds. They can't go a little bit over. Or you can't be just fading at the end. They have to end on time every time. Um, otherwise, nobody's going to use them. Energies is something you learn about. There's something in radio called the soft sell. It's one of those ads that's like, they say that diamonds are forever. And then there's a hard sell. This weekend is the auto sale of the year. You also have what's called a donut. No, not the delicious eating kind. You'll have a jingle. And then there's a space in the middle where there's vocals and then the jingle comes back at the end. So you have to have that timing just, just perfect. 
So when you mix that with the timing we talked about earlier and the energies of knowing when to go a little bit harder, when to go softer in music, it's the same. The kick drum, if you've got a really, really powerful kick drum uh, in a really soft song, it's just not going to work. So you, you learn to deal with the energies of each instrument, but you also learn to deal with the energies of like a build up in a track or, you know, where, where it needs to, to flow. So you learn a lot of those things and all of these things can be transported to something else. So you do learn a lot of things like that, that, that uh, you don't notice will be useful, but you end up using every day in music production. The friends you meet. The nature of radio is the people that you're studying with, a lot of them will be really, really into music. If they want to make it their career, they likely won't be just somebody who listens to music once in a while on the weekend. So you meet a lot of people that are musicians. And in my case, it was interesting because I was the only one that was really into dance music and house music. Most of them were into rock. But this was really useful because I was able to take some of their skills and bring it into my music and look at things in a different way than I usually would have. And there's two of those people that I still work on music projects with um, like 25 years later. So that seems to have worked out. <laughs> so would I go to radio school to become a music producer? Probably not. But was it useful? Yeah, absolutely. So what did you study in college and how is it helping in your music career? Let me know in the comments. I read all of them. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.